Yo, what is up? Welcome to episode number six of Real Lab Live. I'm just driving to work this morning. Um, it's a, again a rainy day in Melbourne, so usually winter towards some sorry, not summer, winter towards spring can be a little bit like this. It's a little bit wet, but um, we're staying positive. Guys, it's episode number six in Real Lab Life. What does what does that mean to us? That means we've been doing this for over a month now. Well done, Real Lab team, for the consistency of posting this every Wednesday afternoon, Melbourne time. Um, I've been loving it so far. Um, like I said, I think video quality wise, production wise, it's it's what it needs to be for now. Um, we'll, we will look into doing this in a much more polished manner. That's probably the word, but um, again, I'm not too fussed about it because when we think about polishing things as how we do um, in most of our billable work, uh, it can slow things down. So I don't want this vlog to slow things down for us. Um, so as raw as it is, as um, limited as it is, um, you know, it does what it needs to do for now, I think. And the point is, again, once again, I know I've mentioned this many, many times, but it's again to bring value to you, the viewers, to understand how we work, the types of um, work that we do, how we do it, uh, not so much who we work with at the moment, but. Um, yeah, I just hope I just hope the things that we do and the things that we put forward in front of you gives you insight and value a little bit more of that um, in the industry, particularly here in Melbourne. Okay. Um, in this episode, one of the things that I'm thinking of doing actually is to talk to some of the team members. I know we're we're vis we're, we're very busy. Um, in terms of work schedule, but I'll, I might try and steal 10 minutes of some people's time, whoever is available, to talk to them in front of the camera, uh, maybe covering things um, in relation to challenges of work. Um, if there's anything that I'd like you to get out of this um, vlog or the series of Real Lab Life, is the challenges, the struggles of being a small agency because, you know, like I said in that, like, like the thing that I said in episode one, if we were only to document our journey from the very beginning, from uh, four years ago, then it would have been such a great story for, not just for ourselves and even like new Relab crew members in the future. Uh, but for everyone who's thinking about starting their own creative agency or their own design agency um, or to test the waters a little bit uh, for the freelancers out there who's, um, who's thinking of taking the next step in opening their own office or their own, their own studio, hiring new team members, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, I really do hope that the insights that we bring you can can, I guess, validate your uh, decisions a little bit more and and put more considerations and in, in the things that you wanted to do in the future. So ho hopefully it does exactly that. Um, if there's anything at all that you think we could improve or you'd like to see from us uh, or have any questions for me or for my uh, team members at Relab, feel free to drop us a an, an email or a comment, then we'll try to respond to it. Um, anyway, back to talking to some of the team members today. I think, yeah, we we will try and talk in front of the camera. I'll be the the host. We'll do it almost like a Q and A session from me to a couple of them. Um, it will be great if we can maybe get a designer and a developer, and we can talk to each and every one of them um, about 
the challenges that they face, how they usually mitigate that, and how the team supports them um, throughout those tough, tough periods, okay? Um, so we'll try and do that. Um, hope you enjoy the vlog. Q&A session with some of our team members. So thank you, Ed and Jake, for being here, for taking a little bit of your time out of work. Um, hopefully we'll do this fairly quickly. We're aiming for 10 minutes. We'll see how we go. Um, so one of the things that I mentioned earlier um, in the introduction of this episode was I wanted to talk about a little bit more about the challenges that we face than um, not just as a team, but specifically down to the individuals as well. So Jake is from design and Ed is from development. Um, I guess before we start, why don't you introduce yourselves um, and tell us a little bit about your role here at Relay? Maybe Ed, you can start. Well, um, my role here, my name's Edward, I do front-end development at Relay. And what that means is that I do a lot of the things that you see on the page. Um, I take what the design team gives me and turn it into a web page with visible elements. Um, so I work a lot with how you interact with the site as well. Mm. So to give the viewers a little bit of a context, I guess yeah. in, a, in a development, in a very broad development point of view, you're divided into back end and front end. Yeah. Whereas Ed's focus more to the front end side of things, which is you know, the things that you see on screen when you jump into a website or applications or things like that. Jake. Um, so my name is Jake. I am a junior graphic designer here at Relay. Um, my role is mainly visual, it's graphic design. So I kind of make things look pretty, I guess. Um, I'll work on a lot of concepts and things that then will be given to Ed, that Ed would then turn to working websites and that kind of thing. Um, oh. um, what were you doing before joining Relab? Me? Uh, well, before this I, I haven't had professional agency experience. I've done a bit of freelancing before, but when, um, I'm, I'm self-taught um, as a developer, so I came into this with web design as a hobby. Um, but before this I used to work at Vodafone. And, uh, used to work in retail and the business aspect um, and that was fun but I wanted to change so I switched over and uh, Relay has been the first agency experience for me so it's been good. Cool. Okay. Um, well I was actually a student so I'm pretty fresh into the graphic design world. I studied, uh, it's called communication design at Monash Uni um, and then I came here. Um, so yeah I'm pretty new to the whole graphic design scene. Cool. Um, with each of your respective roles, there must be challenges. Um, why don't you tell the viewers here, specifically, if there was one big challenge that you've had to face, um, what would it be? Um, well, coming into a studio, I think from uni, you work on your own time, then coming into a studio, you're working on someone else's time. So I guess it's getting used to the studio environment, um, working to deadlines, it's a lot tighter. Mm. Um, and then just basic studio practice, like how to set files up, the best way to work efficiently, um, as quick as possible. Yeah, I'd imagine that's quite different to a stu uh, being a student and working on yeah, well, student projects. You've got a lot more time to do whatever <laughs> you need. Yeah. Whereas here, you, you just got to get it done. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, well, we take, again, we take what the designers give us and those things are approved by our clients. And uh, the biggest challenge here so far we've found is um, uh, translating the design into um, the front end bits or the things that you see on the page. Um, it, it takes a lot of practice, I think, to, to look into the design and go, oh, that's what's really there. Um, and getting things like white space correct um, when you render the page. Yeah, I guess with 
Um, the most of you who would follow Real Lab will know that a lot of the things that we do are visually heavy. Um, so a lot of the projects that we do are visually focused and I guess the front end elements of it and the development sense is expected out of us. Yeah. Um, usually the challenge would be, I guess through our experience, is that we have a design concept and then it needs to be translated into the web um, as a working prototype. And trying to get that exactly right as the design concept would be that challenge that you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. As a team at Relab, how do, you, how do we overcome those type of challenges that um, you guys have just brought up? Um, well, I think at Relab we're very collaborative. We help each other out if we see someone struggling. Um, especially in my situation, I came in not knowing much about like, basic practices. Um, and someone would always step in and help me out, um, show me the best way to do stuff. Um, so I think we like to work together yeah. um, to overcome a lot of issues and I think mm -hmm. it, it works pretty well. Cool. Um, I think a lot of it here is um, also communication. The, we use a number of bits of software to help us work and uh, it, all, it all just means that between the design and the development teams, um, we can be more transparent between each other. I mean, I can literally stand up and talk to the development team and ask what, what's going on over there and what we need to do and all that sort of thing. So it's really good to have a really close environment um, that's well connected with, with these software tools. Yeah. Uh, with us, so. I mean, um, as the owner of the agency as well, I feel that same challenges as we grow, I guess the bigger the team, the team gets, uh, the bigger that type of the challenges is like mainly communications and just transparency, um, flagging up things up front if there are any issues. And those are kind of the things that we learned through in the last couple of years. And then we just try and constantly make the whole process better. I mean, it's great with um, one of our team members here, Didi, who's our project manager, is tried to set up things as so it becomes as efficient as it could be for us and to, and to the customers as well. That way, you know, we can be in the spirit of transparency. We can have our projects finished, you know, in, in, a, in a much more speedy manner, yeah. in a much more accurate manner as well, trying to eliminate any type of misunderstandings that could like really easily happen throughout the process. Um, now we work in a team environment, there's a design team, there's a development team. How do you think your team members have um, helped you throughout, you know, those challenging period of times when they're in environment? Uh, well for me it's basically understanding how to translate a design to web and concepts to web. Um, so I guess Ed's been really handy and just giving a wave and he'll come over and tell me if something's possible or not. Yeah. Um, so for me that's the easiest way just to check that I'm on the right track with design concepts. So yeah. yeah. I guess in, in relation to your challenge transitioning, specifically tra transitioning from being a student to, um, I guess, a working graphic designer in, in the industry is that you have team members in the, in the office that can help you mainly throughout the process of trying to understand the systems and all of that as well. Because mm -hmm. a lot of those kind of stuff pretty much comes with experience mm. and then you just get you know get used to it over time. And how does it work with your team at development here? Um, well at the moment, you know, for every junior developer is a senior developer and um, I think Sam, one of our senior developers, um, has been a great help and mentor mm. of uh, showing how things are structured and, and things are, are done in the project yeah. um, since. Uh, which I wasn't really used to coming into Relay uh, mm -hmm. before. Um, so learning how to do things like Git or code collaboration um, between teams is, is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the ways. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, that's good. So I think just to wrap this up, um, the point of making this video, and particularly in this episode, is we wanted to talk about challenges, not just for the team as a whole, but down to the individuals as well. Um, and we, really the point is that we constantly learn throughout the process. Um, you know, it's a constant, 
constant test and measure and improve type of system because uh, you never get it right the first time. Even if you get the second chance, uh, a second chance to it, you'll get it, you know, right. But then you'll know how to deal with it even better next time. So throughout the process of working on projects or you know with our customers, it has always been like that. And every time we huddle around and we talk about you know things to improve, there will always be something to improve. Um, so it's almost like a never-ending process. As long as we are very, very self-aware about what we're good at, why we're relevant to the industry, then we always aim to become you know, a better representative of the industry that we're in. Um, and it's all really with the point of trying to deliver the best customer experience to all of our clients. Anyway, we'll leave it there, but thanks Ed and Jake for spending some time. Um, hope you enjoy this episode and chat to you soon. things that I wanted to record earlier. Um, one of it is a client meeting, but I failed to do that because I was so in a rush, but hopefully we'll do that next time. But the most important thing is we managed to record that Q&A session with Ed and Jake. Um, hopefully that's a good content um, for you. Um, other than that, Yes, it's just an over. It's just another normal, typical day of working and getting things done as usual. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed this episode. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Uh, and thanks for the support so far. Cheers. <laughs>